It is snowing in Detroit, but that won't slow down the fired up Central Michigan Chippewa fans. They'll take on Big Red, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, who are all revved up for their bowl week debut. And tonight, we've got two great running backs ready for overdrive in the Motor City. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of Capital One Bowl Week. It is the 2012 Little Caesars Bowl as the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers face the Central Michigan University Chippewas from Ford Field here in Detroit, Michigan. It is miserable outside. It is very nice inside. Welcome indoors with us. I'm Mark Neely along with former NFL linebacker Ray Bentley. Also Jamel Hill is here and we'll hear from her shortly. Ray change at the top for Western Kentucky. Willie Taggart leaves about three weeks ago, leaves the head coaching position, takes over at South Florida. Three days later, Bobby Petrino was named as head coach, but he has not yet taken over on the field. That belongs to defensive coordinator Lance Gidry. He is the interim head coach tonight. With all that in stake of place, what's the mindset for the Western Kentucky players coming in? Well, I think they're ready. You know, it's a confusing time for them, no doubt about it, but they're in a situation where Willie Taggart really made an imprint on his football team and Lance Guidry his, and when we talked to him he talked about finishing the job we talked to players they talked about finishing what coach Taggart started and you know a bunch of these seniors they'll never even play for Bobby Petrino so I don't think they're worried about that part of it yet and Lance Guidry has led a team to a bowl victory two years ago with Miami of Ohio so he's been there and done it before he'll have his guys ready to go yeah he was the interim head coach two years ago he's the interim head coach again here tonight now on the field how about this? We're going to see two teams that actually huddle, yeah. and each team has a very impressive power running back. Uh, both of them do. You're going to see old-style football here tonight. You've got Antonio Andrews for the Hilltoppers, a power back who has uh, the breakaway speed. He goes fast, really fast, and he just will break one at some point during the game. And then for Central Michigan, Zerlon Tipton has been on fire for the last six games, 100 yards in each of those, a bunch of touchdowns, and and he's the kind of runner who can bust it, but he finishes runs well and is very strong. Ryan Radcliffe, Central Michigan quarterback, just 336 yards shy of 10,000 in his career. The kickoff is straight ahead. Last year, we were juniors. We were started off 0 and 4. You start off 0 and 4, fellas. Then we won seven out of eight games. Only loss was to LSU. At the time, was the number one team in the country. So you won seven out of eight games to get bowl eligible. Then you got your hearts cut out your damn chest by every bowl committee. Every damn one. But tonight, guess what, seniors? You stand on top of that hill. And we stand with you on top of that hill. Like a team of damn gladiators is what we are. We're a team of damn gladiators. You understand? Coach Taggart said he wanted to build a bully at WKU. We are that bully tonight, and we're staying on top of our damn hill. We are that badass dude. As I said once before, let's go get our damn trophy. An emotional interim head coach Lance Guidry referring to the fact that last year Western Kentucky was the only team bowl eligible to finish above 500 and not be invited to a bowl game. The only other team was... USC who were not bowl eligible and we are set to go Dan Enos in Central Michigan won the toss and have elected to receive well, I don't know about you Mark but coach Gidry got me a little excited up here a powerful speech from Lance Gidry <laughs> oh, God, I love that stuff that's Jesse Roy sophomore out of Charlotte North Carolina to kick off for Western Kentucky Hilltoppers wearing gray for the first time and Central Michigan in the maroon uniforms with Jaleel Adai and Sailor Lavalley back deep for Central Michigan at a short kick. We are underway. Lavalley able to scoop it up at the nine and up to the 16 where he is tackled there. 
the third member of our broadcast crew, Detroit native Jamel Hill down on the sidelines tonight. Jamel, Central Michigan will be missing a couple of key pieces in the receiving court tonight. Yeah, that's exactly right. This has already been an eventful bowl trip for the Chippewas. On Sunday, Coach Dan Enos suspended three of his wide receivers, Titus Davis, Courtney Williams, and DeForrell Davis. I asked them how this would impact the CMU's offense, considering that Davis and Williams are his number one and number two wide receivers. And he said this is a position they've been in before because Titus Davis hurt himself against uh, Eastern Michigan a few weeks ago, and he only played one play in the game, which forced Cody Wilson and freshman or in sophomore Andrew Floyd to step up, which they'll have to do uh, tonight. Now, none of the suspended players are at today's game, but Titus Davis tweeted after the suspension, feels like the end of the world for me. I let everybody down. Back to you guys. Thanks very much. And now, Dan Enos, there's Cody Wilson, who's leading the team in catches with 64, but Davis second in catches at 43, and Courtney Williams was third in catches on the team. But right now, Central Michigan dealing with their starting fullback. That is Tyler Lombardo, who was playing on special teams on the opening kickoff, being helped off the field. As you mentioned, starting fullback, and the Chippewas used the fullback quite a bit. And so that moves Adam Fenton into the starting lineup in place of Lombardo, and hopefully they can get him back squared away and back ready to play, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen here based on what I'm seeing. Lombardo, a junior from Harrison Township, Michigan, injured on the game's first play. And Central Michigan starts at their own 17-yard line. And senior quarterback Ryan Radcliffe, a three-year starter, he mentioned at the top that he is 336 passing yards away from reaching 10,000 in his career and isn't too far away from 3,000 for this single season. Come out in the I formation. Shift the tight end Odekirk over to the left side. Fake the handoff to Tipton. First pass is completed. That is Caleb Southworth up to the 23-yard line. Actually, Adam Finn, the new fullback, already making an immediate impact. Let's take a look at our impact players. Ray on the Central Michigan side. Yeah, and the first guy you have is Eric Fisher. He will be the left tackle tonight, and then Jaleel Adai will play in the defensive secondary, but Fisher's a guy we're going to keep an eye on tonight because he is a beast. He is a projected top 20 draft pick in this coming draft. And second down at four, Tipton with his first carry straight ahead. Not much there. Defensive tackle Kenny Martin with the stop for Western Kentucky. Well, we mentioned the Central Michigan suspensions, and then we just saw the injury on the opening play to Lombardo. The key injury on the Western Kentucky side has to be Quinteris Smith, who tore an ACL a couple of games ago. Would have been interesting to see a, a Quinteris Smith, Eric Fisher matchup, but unfortunately that won't happen tonight, Ray. Yeah, Quinteris Smith. Uh leading the country with 12 and a half sacks uh, injured in week 11 and will not be able to play tonight. It's very unfortunate for the Hilltop. Third and three CMU converted 39 percent of their third downs this year and Radcliffe to throw throws it over the middle and incomplete looking for the tight end Connor Odekirk but a flag is out. Our officiating crew out of the ACC tonight and referee David Epperly. Defense, number 29, 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, they get the strong safety, Keontae Young, for the defensive holding, and it's a first down for Central Michigan. And Central Michigan is uh, an old-school football team in terms of they have, they use the run to set up the pass. So many teams nowadays work it the opposite way. They're a throwback in that regard. Flory the receiver wide to the left and Wilson wide to the right. Hand off Tipton. Again that one's bottled up. Well he cut it outside was able to bounce off the pile but still virtually no gain. Andrew Jackson and Jonathan Dowling of Western Kentucky trying to stop the Zerlon Tipton who just kept those feet moving. Yeah, he, he's a powerful back and he will come out of the pile like that a few times but a nice run blitz called by Western Kentucky and they had that one sniffed out they knew right where that was going and they brought bodies to the hole. So no gain second and ten. Play fake. Radcliffe under heat takes off. 
And it will gain three or four yards around the 37 yard line. Xavius Boyd with the tackle. And I mentioned how, how good Zerlon Tipton has been. Check it out in these last six games. 899 yards, 148 yards a game. And look at the touchdowns here at the bottom. That's an incredible number. And this Central Michigan offense has averaged over 30 points a game during that six game stretch. And Tipton over 100 yards in all six of those games. So he carries that streak into this one. Third and six, Sailor LaValle now in the backfield. And Radcliffe to throw on third down under pressure again to the near side. That's caught by Flory. And it looks like he has the first down at the 45 yard line. Well, Andrew Flory, number nine for Central Michigan, is going to have to be one of those to step up for CMU tonight, Ray, without Davis or Williams. Yeah, and he did. He was in this situation similarly against Eastern Michigan. And you see that the flat is voided, and Flory's in there and makes the play. But in that game against Eastern, he had nine catches for 118 yards and two touchdowns when he was in for the injured Titus Davis. So Flory has shown he can do it. And there's a flag down, but watching him on film, he runs really after nice the routes. play. Personal foul, offense number 83. The play resulted in a first down after administration of a 15 yard penalty. Central Michigan's ball, first and 10. Mm, that's got to be a penalty on the, the defense, defense. Yeah. unless they're going to come yeah, back the other way. There we go. Yeah, they marked it. The <laughs> now they're bringing it back now. Well, Ben McCord, the tight end number 83 for Central Michigan. Now they're going to mark off the penalty in the correct direction if it's against the offense. Right. And because it was after the play, the Chippewas will get the first down and it'll be a first and 10. They just lose all that yardage. So spot it back at the 30. And McCord to the sideline for CMU. Central Michigan, 6-6, six and six, had to win their last three games to become bowl eligible. Kentucky, a Western Kentucky started off so well, including a win over Kentucky early in the year. Seven wins on the season. Sailor LaValle, a gain of about a yard. Calvin Washington, the defensive end with the tackle. Washington's seeing more playing time without Quintera Smith in there for Western Kentucky. And right now, Western Kentucky is loading the box. Uh, they had eight guys up and around the line of scrimmage, and they're, they're going to try and stop the run. That's number one. They're going to try and make Ryan Radcliffe beat them. And that's what they're doing here early on. They're loading the box and they're challenging Central Michigan to throw the football on. Radcliffe in the shotgun. In the empty backfield on second down and nine. Radcliffe across the middle and almost intercepted incomplete at the 35 yard line. Keontae Young nearly with the pick there for Western Kentucky. Boy, and Young should have had that that re interception because he he saw the route. And one thing Radcliffe will do, watch him. See how he looks to his right the entire time. He stared at that receiver the entire time. He was looking at Deion Butler. And when you have a veteran safety like Keontae Young, the junior, he saw it and he jumped it and almost picked it off. Central Michigan facing a third down for the third time already on this first possession of the football game. And they like the screen on this situation. Radcliffe time throws deep across the middle caught Flory breaks free gets a block downfield and into the end zone a 69 yard touchdown for Central Michigan Andrew Flory's third touchdown catch of the year uh, what a nice throw by Ryan Radcliffe and I tell you what he stared it down again <laughs> but, but it didn't matter this time as he found Flory breaking on a post route and another situation where Western Kentucky went for the ball, tried to make a play. Right here, you see, trying to cut underneath. They thought the help was coming from the other side. It was once again Keontae Young working on him. Gets the late block, and Flory fills in admirably, admirably here for Titus Davis in his first drive. That's what they're looking out, looking for from him. Now there's a flag down. Coach Enos is going out to find out what that one's about. This is pre snap before the point after not for the previous play. Illegal substitution on the defense 12 players on the field that penalty is declined try for point. The senior David Harmon for the point after attempt for Central Michigan. 
out of the hole to Cody Wilson. Eight play drive. Even up just over the first four minutes. Looked like we had some movement pre-snap again. And a flag again. And they'll back it up five and Central will kick it again. False start. Offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty. Replay the try. That was on Nick Beamish, one of the interior linemen. That throw by Radcliffe, when he has time, and he did, he can throw the ball down the field pretty good. He's got a nice arm. 21st touchdown pass of the year for Radcliffe. And it's turned into a 25-yard point after, may turn into a 30-yard point after. Another flag is out. Not the cleanest start no. to a football game. False start. Offense, number 93. Five-yard penalty. Try for point. Let's well, get a little more serious now. After two five-yard penalties. So suddenly the point after has turned into a 30-yard attempt. You see the disgust on Dan Enos's face. He's happy about the touchdown, but come on, fellas, let's get this extra point off. Harmon 40 of 41 on PATs this year. And makes it a move point. No flags. And <laughs> knocks it through from 30. But a 69-yard touchdown throw to Andrew Flory has got the Chippewas off to the hot start in snowy Detroit. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Nice and cozy here indoors at Ford Field. The Little Caesars Bowl, 7-0 Central Michigan, Western Kentucky. Get the football for the first time. And Andrews off the bounce from his own three. With a 23-yard line. And another flag is out. And I think we have an injured player as well down there around the 10-yard line. A hilltopper slow to get up. Looks like Tyree Robinson. Western Kentucky. Out of the Sun Belt Conference. Or Central Michigan out of the Mid-American Conference. So these teams meeting for the first time ever tonight. Been a bit of an ugly start with the flags and each team now has had to deal with injury. See if we can see what happened there. You see Robinson, he took on one of the the wedge busters right there, and that, that looked like uh, AJ Westendorf, a tight end, who came down and blew him up pretty good. And that's why you, you see all the the rule changes and things of that nature surrounding the kickoff. Uh, it's the most dangerous playing of the game. I mean, you're talking about guys that, that have, you know, a good 40, 50, even 60 yard run at each other. You're going to get some big time collisions. And that was one for sure. And Robinson's still down. So Lance Gidry, the defensive coordinator and the interim head coach for Western Kentucky. Bobby Petrino is not here tonight. We had hoped that he would be here, but his travel from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Became difficult, if not impossible, due to the weather. And we had hoped to have Bobby Petrino on with us at some point tonight, but that won't happen as a result of Bobby not making the trip up here to Detroit. Good to see Robinson up on his own. There is Kwan Jakes, a four-year starter, the senior from Florida. 21 touchdown passes this year to set a single season record. Watch the tight end 82. That's Doyle. who shifted to the right side. Bosch the fullback in motion. Here's a pitch. Andrews throws it back to the quarterback. He's got Double him. pass. Jake's going deep. Wide open. Caught Rico Brown streaking for the end zone and is tripped up. 
at the six yard line by Lorenzo White. So right out of the gate, the Hilltoppers go to the gadget play and it goes for 70 yards. That's the perfect time to run a play like that in a bowl game. And you get basically you get a lateral and then a throwback and Rico Brown makes the catch on the end. Nice little razzle dazzle here early on as Lorenzo White ended up running down Rico Brown to stop him at the seven. Well, first and goal Hilltoppers. Hand off Andrews. Cuts back. How much there? Maybe a yard. Well, the previous play went for 70 yards. There's Rico up there, and you're going to see a little toss play and then a throwback. Here's the toss. The key to this is Antonio, uh, excuse me, uh, Jakes, K1 Jakes, has to get behind Andrews, so that's a lateral, so then he can legally throw another forward pass. And it was perfect, right on the money, and a great hustle play from Lorenzo White to prevent the touchdown. Second down and goal. Jakes looks like he wants to run it and will tumble in to the end zone. Touchdown. Like he held on across the goal line, a six yard touchdown run for Jakes, his third rushing touchdown of the season. And here's a guy who came into the game with a negative 57 total yards of rushing. Running is not his game, but yet they call his number a little quarterback draw. And he finds a gap up the middle of the Chippewa defense to get to the end zone. So just a three play drive. 70 of the 77. Coming on the pass play. And the extra point for Garrett Schwetman. 9 27 to go. It's already 7 7, Ray. <laughs> Amazing. Nice play by Western Kentucky to get it down there, and then they finish it off with a Jake's touchdown. ESPN College Football, the Little Caesars Bowl, is brought to you by Little Caesars, home of the large, hot and ready pepperoni pizza, the all-new Ford Fusion, go further, and the venture card from Capital One, earn double miles you can actually use. The spirit of Detroit on this snowy night in Michigan. Indoors at Ford Field, the Little Caesars Bowl tied at 7 with 9.27 to play in this first quarter. It's a nice throng from Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's where Western Kentucky University is. Made the trip up north here. Touchdown run for Jakes. Just a three-play drive. It took under a minute and a half in the 70-yard catch by Rico Brown certainly was the big play on the first play from scrimmage tonight for Western Kentucky. Jesse Roy's kickoff with Jaleel Adai and Savali back deep. And Savali scoops it up at the 10 and brought down at the 27 yard line. Well, the touchdown here a lot of green for Jakes. Yeah see that linebacker get out of there it was man to man coverage and that creates a really nice hole there a seam for Jake's to run through so uh, outstanding in terms of the anticipation by Western Kentucky and their play callers and I say callers because Walt Wells is calling the running plays tonight and Nick Sheridan the passing plays for Western Kentucky and we'll get more into that arrangement as as we go forward by the way that 70 yard pass play for Jake's the longest of this season for him and of his career so noteworthy for Kwan Jakes, who capped it off with his own touchdown run. A flag is down. Tipton running up the middle. Stopped by Xavier's Boyd. And our referee tonight out of the ACC, David Epperly. Offside, defense, number 91. Five yard penalty, first down. And Radcliffe now 250 yards shy of 10,000 in his career. Picked up 82 passing yards on that first drive of the game for Central Michigan. Uh, most of it coming on the touchdown pass to Andrew Florey. So first down at five. You see we've already had five penalties whistled in this game. 
an inverted wishbone set. Play fake and in trouble in the backfield. Radcliffe. We'll get back up to the 32 yard line, basically back to the line of scrimmage. Jamarcus Allen was the first one that had an opportunity, though, to get him in the backfield for a loss. Yeah, and you're just going to see the pressure come. And there, I mean, Radcliffe didn't even have a chance to set up, and it was on him. And the Chippewas are going to have to do a better job up front. And this is a pretty strong offensive line that Central Michigan has. They're going to have to do better in protecting Radcliffe. From the eye formation on second down and five. Tipped it. Spinning down at the 36, 37 yard line, close to the first down marker. Andrew Jackson. Making the stop for Western Kentucky after a pickup of four. Andrew Jackson is an all Sun Belt Conference linebacker. Had 116 tackles this year, 17 and a half for a loss. And he's a guy that is as stout as it gets up there in the middle. And in fact, they'll, they'll often uh, send him, uh, not necessarily a blitz, but he'll be responsible for one of the interior gaps. He doesn't flow to the ball, he just fills into the line. Third and short. This time just a third and one. And Tipton has the first down and Moore backs his way up near the 40 yard line. Ty Golden, and Jonathan Dowling, the free safety combining on the tackle. Pretty good block though by the fullback Adam Fenton to help produce that first down. Yeah, that's just power football right there. A little weak side ISO and a nice job by Fenton and then the extra effort from Tipton and he, you'll see him at the end of runs just squirm and twist and fight. I mean he strains for every inch. First down Central Michigan from their own 40. They send McCord the tight end in motion. Radcliffe being pursued dumps it off the screen pass. Tipped in, avoids one tackler, then loses the football, but is fortunate to have a teammate right there in the vicinity, Jesse Kroll, to cover it up. I mentioned earlier that the Chippewas are a nice big a, a draw team, a screen team. And watch him at the end here, though. You see how that ball is up there? You, you want to hold it high and tight into your body. And he didn't have it up there, and when he did try to secure it, it just wasn't happening, and Jonathan Dowling knocked it out. Well, the run and fumble picked up 16. First down, Central Michigan into Western Kentucky territory at the 44-yard line. Quick strike low, but scooped up by Wilson. But he doesn't have much room to maneuver. A flag comes out late, though. Brett Harrington, the quarterback, wrapped him up. Must have got the face mask. And when you don't make a good throw on, on those quick screens, it's twice as hard to gain any yardage. And you saw Cody Wilson struggling there because he wasn't able to make the catch smoothly and transition into a runner. But Harrington looks like he bailed him out with that face mask, but they're talking about Personal it right foul. Now. Face mask on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Right, that's how you make a good play turn bad and you see he's got a hold of the helmet and, and you can't that's a face mask also when you grab around the back of the helmet that's the same as grabbing the face mask you can't get your fingers underneath the, the back of the helmet like that and that's a good call by the official on Harrington don't see that very often though but using any portion of the helmet to bring down a player is the penalty. Yeah, and the key being he hooked his fingers underneath there. Western Kentucky has been penalized 30 yards already in this game. And we have just under six minutes to play in the first quarter. Radcliffe play fake. Going to go towards the end zone. Touchdown. Andrew Flory again. He beat Brett Harrington on the coverage. This is a 29 yard touchdown. Second of the game already for redshirt freshman Andrew Flory. And Central Michigan loves to throw the ball on first down. Even though they're a running team, 
and they fooled Brett Harrington. He, he was man to man over there on Andrew Flory, and Flory runs some nice routes, and that was another excellent throw from Ryan Radcliffe, who is heating it up down the field here early on. David Harmon with the point after, no flags. How about that? Well, right now, Andrew Flory is the story here at the Little Caesars Bowl. Another touchdown for the red shirt freshman and Central goes up seven. Mark and Ray uh, starting full by Tyler Lombardo who injured himself on the opening kickoff is now out for the game with an apparent left knee injury. Back to you guys. Smell thanks. Tough break there for the junior from Harrison Township, Michigan. Doesn't want to take the pads off. No, he's going to hang in there. He's, he's a, tell you what, tough, hard nosed kid. You have to be to play fullback. And now it'll be up to Adam Fenton to fill in that responsibility, as you just heard Lombardo out for this one. Here's the kick from David Harmon. Vince Williams back deep along with Andrews. He's such a. Weapon on special teams is unable to make it to the 20, however. Well, the Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio is on ESPN New Year's Day. Running back Monte Ball leads the Wisconsin Badgers against the vaunted defense of the number six Stanford Cardinal. We have the granddaddy of them all. Coverage begins at 4.30. New Year's Day on ESPN, also live on the Watch ESPN app. Stanford, their offense, Willie Taggart, was a running back coach at Stanford under Coach Harbaugh there. Toby Gerhardt won the Dope Walker Award in 09. And Taggart's brought a lot of that offense to Western Kentucky when he was here. Yeah, this is that offense. This is the same thing you see Stanford run and the 49ers for that matter. Andrews wrapped up. Maybe he gets a yard up to the 20 and pushing there with that's Mitchell Henry, the tight end. Number 80. And Avery Cunningham, number 36 for Central Michigan, the free safety, who were tangled up a little bit away from the play. Central Michigan has really improved over the course of this season in the interior line on the defense. And I'm talking about Latarius Walton, number 58, number 52, Jabari Dean, who is a true freshman up there. And then Lewis Palmer gets in there, Matt Lawsonecki. They have become very good right up in here, and that allows their linebackers to run and make plays. Nick Bosch is the fullback in that offset eye. Andrews again, not much room there. He gets maybe a yard before he stood up by Justin Cherokee, who's the leading tackler for Central Michigan this year. And that was a perfect example of it right there because Cherokee was unblocked. The defensive line took people out of the way. Cherokee steps up, fills the hole, makes the hit at the line, drives his man back. This would be a fun defensive front four to play in front of. Third down at eight. One name we haven't mentioned really for Western Kentucky yet, and this game is not all that old rate, is tight end Jack Doyle. Yeah, Doyle is a big receiving threat. Jakes incomplete at the 32 yard line, intended for Willie McNeil. And it was actually uh, Doyle who makes this thing open, and McNeil's just not able to make the catch, but. Watch the linebacker flow with Doyle right there. You see there over here, creates that seam right underneath, and McNeil's got to get that ball. He's got to make that catch, even though Jakes was a little bit behind him with it. But would have been a, excuse me, Mark, that's what that tight end can do for you. Would have been enough for the first down had he hung on. So we have our first punt of the game. Hendricks breakfield. Averaging 41 yards per punt this year. It's a go from his own 10. Cody Wilson has to retreat on this good punt. It's going to take a Western Kentucky bounce all the way inside the 15. Make that inside the 10. It's still rolling. It hits the five yard line. <laughs> Somebody must have opened the door here <laughs> at Ford Field. Caught a breeze. That's a 74 yard punt for Hendricks Breakfield. Central Michigan with the touchdown lead be backed up on their own five yard line with 350 to play in this first quarter. Brickfield getting some pats on the back. 
Radcliffe now 210 yards away from 10,000 in his career. And the countdown is on, and sure Coach Enos will uh, call some pass plays as Dan Enos, the head coach, does call the offensive plays for the Chippewas. Hand it off to Tipton. Won't really turn that left corner. We'll move the pile for about a yard, yard and a half. Xavier's boy, one of the first to meet Tipton, the 6'1", 220-pound junior from here in Detroit, Parkway Christian High School. And they ran that one right behind the big left tackle, Eric Fisher. And you know, a lot of times, interestingly enough, they'll run to the right side to run behind their left tackle, tackle Fisher, because they, they run the zone play and they cut it back so much. And they'll also choose to run right behind him at times as well. Second down at nine. They fake. Radcliffe. That's deflected and drops oh. incomplete. That wounded duck was hanging there for quite a while. Calvin Washington got a hand up to tip this pass attempt from Radcliffe. And Gavin Rocker is the guy who had the chance for the interception there's the the batted ball right there by Washington it's up in the air and Rocker's looking around he almost landed on top of him it's like oh man gotta find that football yeah well, Washington got that that ball was just inches out of the hand of Radcliffe it appeared Washington's playing really well right now bringing the heat but Central Michigan's been very effective on third down tonight three of three converted from his own end zone, Radcliffe. Too high, incomplete at the 20, going for Cody Wilson. And that's what you get from Ryan Radcliffe. Uh, sometimes he's really good, and sometimes he's just really average, and just will make an errant throw that you have to, you wonder, how do you miss that? Because it's right there, he's wide open, and he throw it four or five guys over, to, four, excuse me, four or five yards over the guy's head. And that's been the kind of problem with Ryan Radcliffe throughout his career at Central Michigan. You see flashes of brilliance, which we've seen here already in the first quarter, and then you see a throw like that, and you wonder what's going on. As Antonio Andrews back deep. He returned to punt 70 yards for a touchdown in week one this year against Austin P. He's standing right near midfield, a Richie Hogan punt. That's a great punt. Wow. That lands at the 29 and is going to roll all the way inside the 15, where it's scooped up by Andrews, who immediately gets tripped up. Wow, the punters shining on each team. Ricardo Singh with the tackle there at the end on special teams. That's an 82-yard punt with a three-yard return. That's a little Caesar Bowl record right there. We've seen a couple of back-to-back world-class punts. Hogan's previous long this year was 74. Did you say that one went 83? 82 yards, 82. which Hendricks Breakfield for Western Kentucky had a 74 yarder just prior to that. So it was uh, Hogan saying to Breakfield, I see your 74 and up you to an 82. On first down, Jakes rolling out is just going to throw it onto the sideline. Well, Western Kentucky playing in a bowl game for the first time as a member of the football bowl subdivision, but that does not take into account their entire history. The Refrigerator Bowl, Evansville, Indiana, December 7th of 52. They defeated Arkansas State 34-19. And then about 11 years later, Tangerine Bowl in Orlando. They beat the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard was a little down that year. Ah, Even though they made it to the Tangerine yeah. Bowl, they got shut out by Western Kentucky. That's what a, happened to the Coast Guard football that's a program? Couple, uh, esoteric bowls right there, your refrigerator bowl and your tangerine bowl. And there's Jack Doyle with his first catch of the game. He's up to the 22. That's his team leading 48th reception of the year. It's a good tight end right here. It looks like he'll be playing in the NFL next year. Yeah, I, I think he will because he has the ability to make plays and he just has that knack. He's a football player. He's able to get separation and he also has a, a great ability at the end to go up and get the football. You'll see him go run down the seam and Jake's take a shot to him here before the night's over. So that game nine, it's a third and short, third and two. They tighten up the formation with Andrews the back. 
Send the tight end Henry in motion. Give it to Andrews. No shock there. Straight up the middle for a first down up near the 30 before being stopped by Jared Chapman. Let's take a look at our impact players for this game, Ray, from the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Well, uh, one way we already talked about is Jack Doyle there on the left. Outstanding as far as his abilities to catch the football, the leading receiver on this team. And then we've also mentioned the linebacker, the middle linebacker, Andrew Jackson. Both these guys are all Sunbelt Conference first team performers and big parts of this Hilltopper outfit. Doyle shifts to the left side of this formation. From the eye with Nick Bosch to fullback. Andrews. Gain of one wrapped up by Shamari Benton, strong side linebacker. Shamari Benton is, is a very good run defender inside. He comes straight downhill, and you need that. When they run ISO at you, which is exactly what Western Kentucky just did, send the fullback at the linebacker, and let's see who, who ducks first. And <laughs> That time, no, nobody ducked, but Justin Cherokee took out the fullback, and Benton comes over the top to finish the play. Bo Brand and Rico Brown are the receivers at the top of your screen, and again, Doyle in motion. Give to Andrews, finds a little crease, weaves his way to the 34. Picks up around four, halted there by Anthony Young, the cornerback. Western Kentucky will continue to pound the football inside with Antonio Andrews and I watched him on tape leading up to this game and they'll hammer him hammer and he'll be picking up two three none maybe maybe you get one and the next thing you know he's out the gate out the back end for a huge run and they'll keep handing it to him throughout the night one and two on third down tonight a third and five Jake's Deflected, incomplete. Shamari Benton was one Chippewa that had a chance to pick that off after it went off the hands of Willie McNeil. And McNeil drops a, a pass here. You're going to see him go underneath. Benton jumps him. Look at that ball right there. It actually is on the shoulder of Shamari Benton. He gets one hand on it. Wasn't able to get it up in the air high enough for someone else to come get it. But another pass slightly behind the receiver. But I got to think McNeil feels he should catch those balls. Breakfield, whose last punt went for 74 yards. Pretty good charge into that one, but the fair catch from Cody Wilson at the 19. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. It's a Time mess out. outside, but inside Ford Field, 14 7 Central Michigan at the end of one. Andrew Flory has a couple of touchdown catches for CMU as we begin the second quarter. They lead Western Kentucky by a touchdown. And just prior to kickoff tonight, specialist Blake Johnson delivered the game ball. Blake Johnson, part of the Wounded Warrior program. Blake Jackson, that is, part of the Wounded Warrior program. And you can go to woundedwarriorproject.org for more on this hero, Blake Jackson. Nice to have him here at the 2012 Little Caesars Bowl in Detroit. Yeah, pretty impressive. Uh, the Wounded Warrior Project, a uh, local high school, was involved with that. And if you're looking for a good cause, that's something that you can really get into and then you can see and feel the good that you do. Yeah, the reception by Jesse Kroll. Quick little slant route, and only the second catch of the year for Jesse Kroll. But as we mentioned at the top of the show, Central Michigan without their uh, two of their top three receivers, Titus Davis and Courtney Williams, both suspended. And that's allowed Kroll to play. And also the hero so far for the Chippewas, Andrew Flory, with a couple of touchdown grabs so far here today. Another big night for Flory. The tipped in run. The first down across the 30, stopped by Cole Tischer. Really. Flory had one really good game this year, Ray, and it wasn't all that long ago. It was November 10th at Eastern Michigan. He had nine catches, 118 yards, and two touchdown catches, which were his only touchdown catches on the year coming into tonight. Yeah, and in that game, Titus Davis got hurt very early. I think he only played one play in that game, and so 
they knew Flory could play and now they're getting a chance to see it happening again. Flory lines up in the slot there on the right side. And Radcliffe airs it out again going in that direction and a complete to the 48 yard line this time to Cody Wilson. Nice throw by Ryan Radcliffe had the time he sits back in the pocket and when you give him time and let him set up he can do some things see the play action there he is stares it down not the tightest spiral in the world but it was accurate effective and Cody Wilson will grab it now he's, he's got some really good hands 220 career catches coming into this ball game for Cody Wilson 17 yard gain first down the shy of midfield for Central Michigan he scored those touchdowns to Floyd on their first two possessions of the game and off tipped it eludes one tackler bumped down near another first down gains nine Boyd and Keontae Young stopping up for Western Kentucky and they ran that one right behind Eric Fisher and he does a great job on his block actually of, of picking up a safety the man on him had slanted inside he kept going and because he took out that second wave that allowed plenty of room for Zerlon Tipton to rattle the chains and 10 first downs for CMU already in this game marching again now at the 42 yard line of Western Kentucky glory in motion hands it off to Tipton finds a hole 30 25 20 down to the 19 yard line a run of 22 yards for Tipton caught by Dowling and Keontae Young Tipton does a, a nice job of seeing it. Watch, here, here's Fisher. He's going to pull around. That's going to have everybody else fly out there. And then the cutback right there inside. And once you get Zerlon Tipton in the open field, he's a different kind of cat then. I mean, he's hard to bring down. He's out, he outsizes all of the guys in the secondary. He's as fast as them. And he's got a vicious stiff arm. 46 yards rushing tonight for Tipton. It was over 1,400 yards for the season. Right back to him. Tipton keeps moving up here to 15, but a flag down. The flag is along the line of scrimmage, so it's either offsides or an alignment situation for the Chippewas. Illegal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. It's checked out of the side. Uh, Jamel? I have to give some credit to CMU wide receivers coach Mose Risen because he told me before the game that Andrew Floyd was going to have a big game today. He said he's really matured. Uh, he said he spent a lot of time in the doghouse as a freshman, but it's just grown considerably. Maybe I'll ask Mose next what the Powerball numbers will be. Yeah. And if that last name sounds familiar, it's a good reason for that. First down at 15. Takes the handoff to Tipton. A well read. Minimal gain. In fact, no gain for Connor Odekirk. Mose Risen was, well, he's Andre Risen's what brother, right? And he was the Central Michigan wide receivers coach back some 32 years ago when I was there. Wow. And he was serious about his business back then. And I tell you, if he has improved any from that time, he's one heck of a coach because I remember him from back in the day, and, and he was a taskmaster who would get you to do what he wanted you to do one way or the other. Radcliffe throws it out to Tipton, and gets hammered down That's back Jonathan. at the 34. Jonathan Dowling, the free safety, blowing that play up for a loss of eight. Jonathan Dowling is an all Sun Belt Conference performer and he's going to come flying up from the outside. He sees it right away. He's going to avoid a block. He's up near the top. There he comes right there. He gets by the fullback. That was Adam Fenton who his job was to block him. The thing got outside too fast and Dowling closed and made a huge hit. Had six interceptions this year did Dowling along with 60 tackles and that was a big hit for not that uh, big of a guy just 198 pounder he brought a full load there Radcliffe on third and long third and 23 and incomplete throws it over the head 
of the fullback, Adam Fitton. Nice so, defensive stand there by Western Kentucky, but Central Michigan kind of got away from what got him down there, and that was running the football. He tried to throw it out on the perimeter, and the speed of Western Kentucky took those things away. I think they're better off running straight at him, Mark. Well, David Harmon is long this year is 51 yards. That was against Ball State. Hit the upright and still went through. Uh -huh. Bank shot. So a 50-yard field goal that time for David Harmon to make it a 10-point game. Boy, he had, I tell you, he could have made that from 60 yards. With the length on this kick right there and knocks it in and coach Guidry says that's all right boys we'll be all right it's 17 to 7 central over western Kentucky Joe Tessitore with this Capital One Bowl preview Georgia coach Mark Rick announced today that defensive tackle John Jenkins will miss the New Year's Day game against Nebraska he's academically ineligible the 300 pounder is a top prospect expected to be a first round NFL draft pick Georgia faces Nebraska January 1st at 1 p.m. on ABC. Let's get you back to Mark and Ray in Detroit. Tess, thanks very much. That 50 yard field goal for David Harmon has tied a Little Caesars Bowl record. Steven Guskowski of Memphis back in 2005 kicked the 50 yarder. So Harmon has equaled that with the help of the right upright. Harmon's kickoff. Williams and Andrews back deep, and that'll be a touchback. And Western Kentucky will begin at their own 25-yard line. Well, Bobby Petrino, the new head coach of Western Kentucky, things change tomorrow as he completely takes over. But the history of Bobby Petrino at the University of Arkansas involved in the motorcycle accident on April 1st, fired on April 10th, and then. December 10th, just three days after Willie Taggart departed for South Florida, hired as the Western Kentucky head coach, a four-year deal for Bobby Petrino. Yeah, he, I guess he's, uh, he spent a lot of time trying to get it right with his family, and they, uh, on their urging, he came back into the coaching profession. Jake slings it out down the sideline. Andrews with a first down. Up near the 40. And several months back, Bobby Petrino visited with Joe Shad. You can see that interview online. But you know, Bobby Petrino saying that if he played it over in his head a million times, how could he do this? And, and like you said, Ray, the thing that really sticks out is he needed to make this right by his family. I had a chance to speak with Bobby today by phone. We'd hoped to have Bobby here today in person in the booth, but due to the weather, he couldn't get out of Bowling Green. Uh, and he said just that. His family has blessed his move to Western Kentucky. They're excited for him as there's a catch for Doyle. Excited to have him back in the game because that was my question. Hey, uh, how are things going with the family? He said good and he said there were other offers out there. We got together as a family and the family said we believe Western Kentucky is the place to be. They're happy to be back in the state of Kentucky. Right. Of course the time at University of Louisville. He said that played a part as well. And it'll be interesting to follow him at Western Kentucky and see uh, if if this has changed him. Because by all counts, uh, he needed to do some soul searching, and apparently he's done that. Here's Andrews straight ahead, 45-40 down the sideline, inside the 25, makes a cutback and is down inside the 15-yard line. I asked Bobby Petrino specifically about Andrews, and he said. Going to love to have him next year, and he said he'll probably catch more balls out of the backfield with my offense next year than he does under this current offense. But that's quite a run. It goes for 39. Yeah, well, Andrews has 35 catches on the year, so he's no stranger to catching the football. My boy, he can run it now. Prior to this, six carries, 12 yards. Kind of how I described it. But all of a sudden, he's going to bust a big one, and there he went on that, and that's how this Western Kentucky football team has been able to generate offense throughout the season. They just keep handing it to Andrews. Off the left side, up near the 10. 
Gain of about four yards. He came in 274 yards from breaking Barry Sanders' single season record for all purpose yards. And that last run made a, a pretty decent dent in that. And then he it caught the pass prior to that for a first down. So he's getting yards all kinds of different ways. Now with that run, 115 shy. Second down and six. Western Kentucky scored on their first possession. Under eight minutes to play till halftime. And they're down by ten. Henry in motion. More Antonio Andrews. Around the six for a gain of four. Andrews six feet tall, 210 pounds. For Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Grew up on the Army base. I uh, considered the Air Force Academy before deciding to go to Western Kentucky, a guy who has a military background in his family. Yeah, he, he actually was a quarterback in high school, and when he first came to Western Kentucky, well, was a quarterback. But he was one of those quarterbacks that didn't throw the ball very much. He, in high school, he ran it out of that, basically your wildcat formation, people want to call it. That's the kind of quarterback he was. And eventually they said, you're too good at running the football. We're just going to put you back there. Play time clock out. was at one. Western Kentucky. Yeah, Western Kentucky Media uses time their out. first timeout of this first half. ESPN College Football, the Little Caesars Bowl, is brought to you by the Experience Buick Lease. It's a new lease on luxury. And ProjectLuna.com. Winter time here in Detroit. A little ice skating and snow falling. 6:56 left till halftime. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's big red. The mascot red. for Western Kentucky. And you think he's simulating ice skating? You're <laughs> you're onto something. We'll see more of Big Red. One of the best mascots going. Nobody knows quite what it is, but it is Big Red. Keyshawn Simpson now in the backfield for Western Kentucky as they come out of the timeout. Play fake. Jake's. Rolling out to the end zone, a one-handed grab, touchdown. Jack Doyle to tight end. His fifth touchdown catch of the season. And that's what I'm talking about with Jack Doyle's ability to make a play. He hung in there and gave Jakes a big target at the end. Somehow Central Michigan lost sight of him. I don't know how you do that with that guy, their, their leading receiver. And yet he bails Jake's out with a one-hand stab to get the touchdown for the Hilltoppers. Garrett Schwentman for the point after. Out of the hold of Hendricks Brakefield. Makes it a three-point game. Jack Doyle stuck that big paw up there and found the football. There you see Jake's rolling out to the right. Nothing to do. Going to throw it in the end zone. One hand grab, and Western Kentucky gets back in this thing. They trail now by three. Capital One Bowl Week rolls on tomorrow with three games. The triple header begins at three. Bowling Green takes on number 24, San Jose State, and the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. Then at 6.30, Duke makes their first bowl appearance since 1994 against Big East co-champion Cincinnati in the Belk Bowl at a 9.45. Out to San Diego for the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl as Brett Hundley and number 17 UCLA face the Baylor Bears. Catch Capital One Bowl Week tomorrow, a triple header. Also live on Watch ESPN. Western Kentucky drives six plays. And Andrews had 63 of those 75 yards. Yeah, Andrews showed you what he could do lining up wide as a receiver and then pop that one long run. Sophomore Jesse Roy to kick off for Western Kentucky. Sailor the Valley. Tim Phillips back deep for Central Michigan. Alley from just inside the 10. Stumbles forward across the 30, up near the 34. Pretty good starting field position for the Chippewas. Well, that last touchdown 
I thought Jakes was just going to throw it out of bounds and they'd kick the field goal, but something happened late. There's here, Jakes right there, and there's the guy who's covering him. That's Jason Wilson. Excuse me, that's Doyle. Uh, watch Wilson now. He's got him pretty good back there in the back of the end zone. He's got his man. He's locked up right here. But what you're going to see is the quarterback breaks the edge and he leaves him. And that's a cardinal rule in football. You can never leave your man alone like that when the quarterback's scrambling. That's called the plaster rule. You have to plaster to your guy until that quarterback gets across the line of scrimmage. And then and only then can you come up and be a run defender. Zerlon Tipton. Picks up three on first down. Calvin Washington with the tackle. Well, we've got two backs tonight, Ray, and you mentioned it. You may go for two yards, three yards, one yard, and all of a sudden, bam. Yeah, 30, pop, 40 yards. Pop it out the other end on you before you know what hits you. And, and both of them are very similar in that they can get up to top speed very quickly. I, call, I, I say they get fast, fast. Well put. Thank you. Second out at six. Radcliffe slings it out to Wilson, makes a cut, avoids one tackler, and has a first down up at the 45. Nice little move by Cody Wilson doubling back after making the catch and that's what Wilson is is really known for his ability not only the good hands but his ability to run after the catch and make something happen when he gets the football a little intensity from coach Enos on the sideline who has done a really nice job in turning this season around for Central Michigan uh, at one point three and six didn't look like much and then they win their final three to get into this bowl game. Radcliffe quick throw and he did catch it but Wilson had the knee down. And Radcliffe recognized the corner blitz and threw right behind it. Now, unfortunately he threw a little bit low unfortunately for Central Michigan but the corner blitz comes. Oh that thing bounced yeah. off the ground. You saw the safety, Keontae Young, coming over to get the coverage. Please reset the game clock to 5:25. So that is it an incomplete pass. The play will start on the snap. Yeah, they caught it down there on the field. So it's a second down and ten. Two receivers to the right. And out of the eye formation. Radcliffe steps up, throws across the middle, and has his man complete at the 39 yard line. Cody Wilson and a first down for the Chips. Well, Central Michigan's previous head coaches include Brian Kelly, who was with the Chips 04 to 06, won the MAC championship in 06. Of course, now will play for the national championship this year as a head coach in Notre Dame. And and he was followed by Butch Jones, who was Central Michigan head coach 07 to 09, won a couple of back titles, went to Cincinnati, and has recently departed to Tennessee. That's a pretty good lineage of, of coaches there in the last half a decade or so at Central Michigan. Take it off. This is the tight end, Connor Overkirk. And he has a first down inside the 25 yard line. Gain of 15 for Odekirk. And this is just your old end around. He's just going to come around and take the handoff. Bam, he got a lead blocker out in front of him. That's big Andy Phillips knocking somebody out of the way and get Odekirk out in open space a little bit. That goes as just his second rushing attempt of the season. I like this play calling for from Dan Enos here today. He's really kept a nice mix going. He's, he's making sure that Zerlon Tipton gets his carries. But he's also throwing the ball down the field when the opportunity presents itself. Gives it to Tipton, trying to turn that left corner to the 21. Stopped by Andrew Jackson, the middle linebacker, for just a pickup of a couple. Flag came in real late from the back judge. After the play, personal foul. Offense, number 65, 15-yard penalty, second down. Now Darren Keaton, the right guard, called for the personal foul. 
And that's going to back Central Michigan all the way back to the 37 yard line. Keaton, six foot three, 300, 305 pound senior. One of the stalwarts on that right side of the def uh, offensive line with Repoves and Keaton, a couple of seniors, is pretty strong. I mean, th this is a very good offensive line collectively. And then the best guy is Eric Fisher, 79. On second and 23, the pass batted down by Calvin Washington. And second time tonight, Washington has gotten close enough to Radcliffe to knock the ball pretty much before it even comes out of his hands. Interim head coach for Western Kentucky, Lance Guidry, who was the interim head coach two years ago in a bowl game for Miami of Ohio and won that game. He was part of a huge turnaround with Miami of Ohio that year. They were one of three teams that had double digit losses and then came back to have double digit wins the following season. And that final win to get him to 10 and 4 was the GoDaddy.com Bowl win coached by Lance Gidry. A 30 23 underneath. And Wilson brought down at the 27, needed to get to the 14 for a first down. Right down by Camp Thomas. The turf monster got Cody Wilson. He just tripped. Well, David Harmon tied a Little Caesars Bowl record with a 50 yard field goal made. His last attempt. This one will be off the left hash into the hold of Cody Wilson. And 46. And wow. that one blocked. This can be returned. Looked like Xavius Boyd is the one who blocked it. And Central Michigan comes up empty. Right, and he shot through the middle, got the hand up, and knocked it down. Here he comes right through the gap, gets a hand on it, and they thwart a Central Michigan scoring opportunity. I'm Joe Tessitore with a look ahead to your Reese's halftime report. We're going to tell you about Georgia losing a top defender. Robert Smith will give us his key to LSU prepping for Clemson and UCLA's turnaround season. How will it finish up tomorrow against Baylor? That's coming up on the Reese's halftime report. Let's get you back to Detroit. Tess, thanks. We we'll look forward to seeing you and Robert here shortly. We have just 2.53 left in this first half. Western Kentucky takes over, down three. The Toppers scored a touchdown on their previous possession. Jake stumps off the screen. Andrews lost the football, but bats it out of bounds. That would have been catastrophic for Western Kentucky. A little screen pass off to the weak side, and here's Andrews. And Nice job of just ripping the football out by Avery Cunningham. Had the arms wrapped around, got his hand up in there, and yanked that thing out. And Andrews has had some fumble problems in the course of this season. Jakes looking for Andrews. Now the previous possession for Western Kentucky resulted in a touchdown or viewer drive cap and it really began with the running way of Antonio Andrews. Yeah, the run after the catch initially because he lined up wide, made that grab, and then here he rips off 39 yards. At that point, he had six carries for 12 yards. And he, he get the touchdown at the end there. Doyles is able to shake his defender late, make the one-hand stab to pull Western Kentucky to within three. A Buick drive recap. Western Kentucky facing a third and ten here, though, have not converted on longer than a third and eight tonight. Dumped off underneath incomplete for Andrews. They wanted the middle screen, and it looked like somebody reached in and got a hand on the football on their way to the quarterback. A little middle screen, and they do like to run that and, and dump the ball off to Andrews on, on third and ten, third and medium type things, and Kwan Jakes knows he missed a little bit of an opportunity there. 
And they didn't, didn't use up very much time, and Central Michigan will get it back and you see their two minute offense. Central Michigan has all three of their timeouts remaining. He's had punts of 74 at 47 yards tonight in Breakfield. Wins Wilson to his own 34, skirts by one tackler and steps out around the 40. Well, Capital One Bowl week continues Friday with three games. First at two, Ohio takes on Louisiana Monroe in the Advocare V100 Independence Bowl from Shreveport. Then at 5.30, Rutgers faces Virginia Tech in the Russell Athletic Bowl. And at 9, Minnesota and Texas Tech square off in the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas. It's Capital One Bowl Week Friday on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Triple headers next couple of days. I'm telling you, I got a nice little weekend, or the end of the week, I should say, playing. Central Michigan with a three point lead. Begin at their own 39 with all three timeouts and 217 left in the half. And give it to Tipton. Still on his feet up to midfield. The first down run. Finally stopped by Keontae Young, but rambles for 11 yards. And looked like they pulled the big guy right here is Fisher. And watch him pull around and lead this thing. A little tackle trap. And he gets up in the hole and destroys a linebacker, keeps him totally out of there. He is a dominant football player. If you're interested in seeing how offensive lines should be played, keep your eyes glued to number 79 because he is extremely good. He should be a first round pick in this year's NFL draft. And off again, tipped in, going to the short side, skirts by two tacklers there, but not a third at the 47 for a gain of three. Eric Fisher, the left tackle, a 6'8", 305 pounds. Yeah. You know, when he came to Central Michigan, he was 242 pounds. But he was 6'8", and they, they saw a guy that they could pack some weight on. Maybe they'd get something special. They did a similar thing with Joe Staley, who now starts at left tackle for the 49ers and was a number one pick. Pass too high off the hands of Flory. He already has a couple of touchdown catches tonight. And Mike Cummings, the offensive line coach for the Chippewas, uh, got a lion's share of the credit from Dan Enos as far as the development of Eric Fisher. You know, they remarked that he, he's a kid that actually started the last few games when he was a true freshman. And so he didn't get a redshirt year to really develop. I mean, this is a fourth year senior. And they, they think talking about, boy, if they'd have had one more year with him, how dominant would he have been? Well, I tell you this. That kid's ready for the NFL right now. He don't need another year of season. CMU three of six on third down tonight and a third and six. Radcliffe a lot of time but overthrows Flory again. It's another one of those scratch your head Radcliffe passes that anybody who's followed Central Michigan football for the last three four years knows what I'm talking about because he'll throw strikes and he'll look uh, like a world beater. And then he'll miss the simplest passes, and generally it's by, with an overthrow. And I'm not sure what it is about him that, that brings that out, but it's been a chronic problem throughout his career. And now he's gotten better with it, but it still uh, comes out and bites him every once in a while. Andrews back at his own 10 for Western Kentucky. Richie Hogan's only punt tonight went for 82 yards. And a Little Caesars Bowl record. I have to pin him in here. Fair caught at the 11 by Andrews. And Western Kentucky comes in 7 and 5. And one of their early wins, week three, was at Kentucky. Kentucky leading 31 24 after scoring on their first possession of OT. And Antonio Andrews, two and point conversion. They didn't go for the PAT, they oh. went for two and won it in overtime. It's a Sun Belt Conference thing, I think. They, they like to just go win the game. But we saw a similar play like that first play of the game here tonight. Right. Uh, kind of a double pass deal. Where this one was actually uh, a double lateral and then the long pass. Well, Western Kentucky, their first transition year to FBS was 2007. 2009 was their first year of being bowl eligible as a full time FBS member. Playing in their first bowl game as an FBS member and sacked back at the six is K1 Jakes. That's Blake Serpa. 
who's playing a little timeout defense. Central man. Michigan. Their first timeout. There'll be a 30 second timeout. First out. sack of the night for either team, and with the 30 second timeout, we'll step aside for a half minute Please as well. Please reset the game clock to 55 seconds. Central Michigan, one timeout remaining, and a third and seven upcoming for Western Kentucky from just inside their own 15. And you mentioned Ray Central Michigan would like to force a punt and see if they can make something happen late here in this second quarter. Jack Doyle is the tight end up at the top here. That's one of the favorite receivers for Jakes. Trying to make the 21. They hand it off, though, and wrapped up immediately is Antonio Andrews by Cesar Rodriguez. Timeout, Central Michigan. Their final timeout of the half, 30 second timeout. Central Michigan will use their final timeout. Western Kentucky. Willie Taggart is in his third season as the head coach. Of course, was the quarterback for Western Kentucky in his playing days. Moved on to South Florida. And the connection there, Willie Taggart is from the Tampa area. So it's a bit of a uh, situation of him returning to his home area. But a very successful three seasons. Uh, you know, a team that was 0 in 12 for some of these seniors on this Western Kentucky team four years ago. Yeah, the year before Willie Taggart came in, that group was 0-12, and then in his first season, they were 2-10. and But as we heard Lance Guidry talk about at the very top of the show, he wanted to make a king of the hill, a bully, if you will, out of the Hilltoppers, and he was on his way to doing it. You know, last year they were 7-5, and five, did not get invited to a bowl game. This year at 7-5, and five, they made it here to the Little Caesars Bowl their very first bowl appearance in FBS. Let's see if the chips come after Brakefield, who's up three yards deep in his own end zone for this punt. And Wilson calling for the fair catch at his own 40. Jamel Hills down on the sidelines. Jamel, you had a chance to talk to Coach Taggart via the telephone today, correct? Uh, yeah, I did. And the main thing that Coach Taggart expressed was pride. Uh, he's very proud of how far this group has progressed. And as he said, as he's told me over the phone, uh, he really is impressed with these seniors. He said they could have walked away from this program uh, when they were 0 and 12 and even some tough years they experienced with him, but they chose not to. And he said as a WKU alum, he's proud of not only where the program is, but where it's going. And Taggart played quarterback there 94 to 98 was a four year starter. No timeouts for Central Michigan. Off the hands of Tipton incomplete. And Coach Taggart actually uh, had an earlier stint coaching with the Hilltoppers and then left, went to Stanford with, uh, with uh, Jim Harbaugh. And that's where he picked up this offense. Was there for three years and then came back to the Hilltoppers and uh, really took a, a diamond in the rough type program that was making a transition from FCS to FBS and got things turned around the right way. I mean, he did an outstanding job. He left Bobby Petrino with a really solid football program. Second down at 10. Dumped off again to Tipton. For the 48 of Western Kentucky. Again, no timeouts. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. 24 seconds remaining. And spiked by Radcliffe to stop the clock with 22 seconds to go in the half. And with the range that David Harmon has shown on the, that 50 yard field goal that he already made, which would have been good for, I would say, at least another 10 yards, they're not too far out of field goal range. However, the last time they tried that field goal, they got it blocked. And I know that's on the mind of Dan Enos as he's over there on the sidelines trying to figure out where he wants to get this ball to. Radcliffe across the middle and a completed pass. He'll stop the clock for the first down. That's to Wilson at the 35. Gain of 17. They need to just kill it again. With no timeout, so Radcliffe. With the quick spike to stop it with 14 seconds left and 
Well, now they're in that area. Yeah, they can make a field goal from here. There's no question Harmon has the range. Question is, do, does Coach Enos want to take a shot deep down the field, try and maybe get himself six points here at the end of the half? The 50 yarder he made tied a Little Caesars Bowl record. They do not have a timeout, so they have to get this clock stopped one way or another to get that field goal try. Radcliffe lost the football. It's loose. Still loose. Radcliffe picks it up, but he's going to run with it. And time's going to run out. <laughs> a very bizarre finish to the first half. Yeah, that ball just got slapped out of his hands. I think Jamarcus Allen knocked it out. You're right, number 43, Jamarcus Allen is going to do a little move to the outside, come back inside, and right there, slaps the ball right out of the hands of Ryan Radcliffe, and then the mad scramble is on. Radcliffe ends up with it again and gets near the yard yard of, or line of scrimmage, excuse me, but that's the end of the play. Jamel? Uh, Coach, you had some missed opportunities there in the first half. That was just one. How do you better capitalize on them in the second half? We just got to keep playing. As you mentioned, we had the ball down there on the red zone twice, and we got three points out of those two because of some uh, uh, untimely penalties. We got to play smarter, and uh, the motions got to us there a little bit, and we got to be smarter. You suspended two of your top wide receivers for this game, but Andrew Flory has stepped in capably. He has a couple of touchdowns. How do you continue to get him the ball uh, going forward? Well, him and Cody are both doing a nice job, and uh, you know, that's what we expect out of Andrew Flory. That's why you recruit. You got guys, when it's their turn to step up, they got to step up and play. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coach Enos, Jamel, thanks very much. Three-point game here, our halftime score at the Little Caesars Bowl, 17-14 Central Michigan. Now let's go to Joe Tessitore in the studio and our Reese's halftime report. Thank you, Mark. Back here at Reese's. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of Capital One Bowl Week. It's the 2012 Little Caesars Bowl, Western Kentucky and Central Michigan. We prepare to start the second half and a three-point lead for the Chippewas. Happy holidays from inside Ford Field. Mark Neely along with Ray Bentley. Jamel Hill with us as well tonight, Ray. Central Michigan without two of their top three receivers, both suspended for violating team rules, but Andrew Flory stepped right up for CMU with a couple of quick TDs. Yeah, he really did. Got it going early on. And Flory, as I talked about, runs excellent routes. And he ran a couple of beauties in these touchdowns that he caught. This one, just a crossing route. Gets his hands on the ball. Gets a late block there. And bam, 69 yards all the way to the house. Now this next one, little post corner post move. Totally shook the defender. That's his second touchdown. Both very nice throws. Now Western Kentucky, they came out firing the first play of the ball game from scrimmage they go with a nice double pass and Rico Brown ends up with it doesn't quite get to the end zone but they cap that one off with a quarterback draw by Kayshawn Jakes and then Jack Doyle with the touchdown reception that's the 14 for Western Kentucky Central up by three but look at the time of possession here 19 and change to 10 and change and that's a huge stat because both these teams want to possess the football and so far Central Michigan is winning in that side of the battle. Western Kentucky will get the football to begin the second half as David Harmon to kick it off for Central Michigan. 17-14 CMU first ever bowl game for Western Kentucky as a member of the football bowl subdivision. Antonio Andrews, Tyree Robinson back deep. Andrews will take a knee. 
Detroit native Jamel Hill back in her hometown. What's going on downstairs, Jamel? Well, as our viewers saw at the beginning of the game, Western Kentucky coach Lance Gidry is a very fiery speaker. So I asked him, what did you tell your team at halftime? He said he told them adversity hits every team. It's just a matter of how you recover it that matters. He also said the team that sticks together will win this game. And a couple little injury notes here. Uh, defensive end Cole Tischer is out for the game with an elbow injury. And also Andrew Jackson, who got hurt right before the end of the first half. He's got a twisted ankle, but he will return to play in this half. Well, Jamel, thanks. We were curious about Jackson because we saw him being helped off the field up the tunnel when the half ended on that strange last play of the first half. Andrews with the carry across the 30-yard line. It picks up six. Mari Dean with the tackle for Central Michigan. Andrews had 11 carries for 64 yards there in the first half. Busted up the one big one, the 39 yarder. They'll continue to pound him. And you will see that the offensive line from Western Kentucky start to wear down the Chippewa defense. That's what they count on, but they haven't had enough time in possession to do it to the extent that they would like to do it. That's Doyle who shifted to the right side of the formation. Here's the pitch. Andrews. Maybe a yard. Well read by Shamari Benton. Strong side linebacker in that CMU defense. Benton does a great job of staying behind the football. A lot of times you get a, a, a sweep or a toss type motion and linebackers just want to fly out of there. And not this guy, Shamari Benton. He knows how to keep leverage on the football and then close downhill and make a stop in the hole. Second leading tackler this year for CMU. Brings up a third down at three on this first possession of the second half. Jakes with some heat off the edge, throws it looking for the tight end. Mitchell Henry, an incomplete around midfield on the coverage, Anthony Young. Central Michigan brought a blitz off the edge. And that, I think, hurried Kwan Jakes more than he wanted to. And he was kind of stuck with that receiver because that's where his first read took him. And it was covered well, both over the top and underneath by Chippewa defenders. Jakes just had to throw it away and they have to punt this opening possession here in the second half. Yeah, three and out for him. Their fourth three and out of the football game. Hendricks Brakefield's punt. Fair catch for Wilson at the 20. 47 yard punt with no return and Ryan Radcliffe back onto the field. He had 212 yards in that first half passing. So he's 124 yards shy of reaching 10,000 career passing yards. Again, only Dan Lefevre has thrown for more in Central Michigan history. Yeah, but to me, the big thing for Radcliffe, zero interceptions in the first half. And when he's when he turns the ball over, the Chippewas have problems winning. When he doesn't turn it over, they're a pretty solid football team. They're in an unbalanced line right now. Give it to Tipton. Cuts it back. And out of that, picks up seven yards. Well, what a block by Eric Fisher again. He, he just working on Calvin Washington, and he sticks on him the entire play. You see him right there on the edge. He's still battling them. Here they are, and watch him stay with it when the cutback comes. He gets right back on him and keeps keeps on him till the end of the play. And that, that's a nice cut there by Tipton, keeping the thing alive. We go right back to him. And Tipton has the first down, all the way up to the 38. Being stopped by Xavius Boyd. And Ramble goes for nine yards. Rulon Tipton. We're going to see a lot more of him in this second half. Yeah, I think that's what you're going to see a lot of is uh, Tipton carrying the football and then play action pass, in particular on first down. That's when Coach Enos likes to play it because he knows the opponent's thinking run all the way. And look at all these guys in the box here for Western Kentucky. They got eight, nine guys up in there right now. He does hand it off, and with all those defenders in the box, led by Jamarcus Allen, it's a loss of four yards. And that's where you want to 
make a, a check to a pass as you look at the last six games for Zerlon Tipton and the incredible numbers that he has. Uh, almost 150 yards a game, 13 touchdowns. The Chippewas four and two over those six games where Zerlon Tipton has been pretty much unstoppable. 16 carries, 73 yards. Longest rush of 22 so far in this one. Nice catch by Wilson. Pulls it down at the 45. That's also a whale of a throw from Ryan Radcliffe. You know, that's an out route from the opposite hash, and he's, he put it in a, right in the perfect spot that you could throw that football. You know, give Wilson some credit, but Radcliffe steps into this one. Bam, I mean, that's perfect. He got it over the outstretched arms of Arius Wright, but still with a, enough touch on it so that it dropped down to where Cody Wilson could bring it in. Seven catches for Wilson for 74 yards. A gain of 10 brings up a third down and three. Wilson in motion. Radcliffe going his way, and it should have been oh. picked off and taken the other way by Jonathan Dowling. And we saw uh, Dowling make a play earlier on a, a similar type deal, but he came up and made a big hit. This time he makes the big the cut and he closes so fast, but he just dropped the football because this is six points. You can see right there in front of you, that's when Dowling took off. And I guess there's a reason he's playing in the secondary. Instead because, of being a wide receiver, yes. you say. <laughs> Pretty much. Boy, that was six points. He knew it. Richie Hogan punting. Andrews back at the 15 of Western Kentucky. And another nice punt, but it's going to land right near the goal line and go into the end zone for the touchback. 55 yard punt. The Western Kentucky will begin at their own 20. Western Kentucky playing with interim head coach Lance Gidry, who two years ago was the interim head coach for Miami of Ohio, the GoDaddy.com Bowl. It's going to take four quarters, not just the fourth quarter, all four quarters, fellas. We got to come out the gates. We got to come out the gates and run our race. Coach Taggart said he wanted to build a bully at WKU. We are that bully tonight, and we're standing on top of our damn hill. We are that bad. As I said once before, let's go get our damn trophy! <laughs> Trying to win their first ever bowl game. That's some motivation. Yeah. And well, let's face it, this could be his last night on this staff. Yeah, th I think it is. And so, there ain't no doubt about the heart of Lance Gidry. Well, Western Kentucky takes over on their own 20, their first possession of the second half, trailing by three. Then Doyle in motion. Hand off Andrews. Scoots forward to the 26. Jamel downstairs, and Jamel, Western Kentucky's defense taking some more hits. It, yes, they are. Uh, starting uh, starting cornerback Cam Thomas was carted off the field. Uh, his injury is undisclosed at this point, but it does not appear as if he'll return. He's the second starter missing because Cole Tisher is also out for this game with an elbow injury. Jamel, thanks. So ranks thinning out on defense for Western Kentucky, but trying to keep it together here. And Andrew Jackson, their big linebacker, also with a uh, ankle injury so he's hobbled a little bit but he's been out there in that first series and second and four give to Andrews Looks like he'll have the first down after 31 before being brought down by Shamari Benton and there's center center John Conway slow to get up a little slow popping up off the turf three year starter at center for Western Kentucky guy who took every snap last season and that's the guy that makes all the calls up front. And that's one you, you don't want to lose. Obviously, you don't want to lose anybody, but the guy who makes all the calls is one you don't want to lose. So, an official timeout with 10 on 1 to play in the third quarter. ESPN College Football, the Little Caesars Bowl, is brought to you by. 
the Capital One Cash Rewards Card with a 50% annual bonus. Great town, a fun little spot in downtown Detroit. This 2012 Little Caesars Bowl, 10-0-1 to play third quarter. Three-point lead for Central Michigan over Western Kentucky. And Sean Conway did come out of the game under his own power. Ray did have a little hitch in that giddy-up. Yeah, they're retaping the left ankle. And meanwhile, Luke Stansfield, field, number 69, comes in to snap. First down from their own 31-yard line. It's Willie McNeil split wide to the left, wide receiver. 40 catches this year. Does not have a catch yet in this football game. And the game on the run. Straight ahead, Antonio Andrews for no gain. Amari Benton makes the tackle, but he's got a lot of help from those two interior guys that have done a nice job all night, Notarius Walton and Jabari Dean. Those guys are eating things up in the middle of that line, and they're also keeping people off of the linebackers. Those defensive tackles are a linebacker's best friend. I can tell you from experience, those guys can take care of you and, and really make all the difference in the world. Second down and 10. Andrews trying to thread his way through and does so up across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Met there by Taylor Bradley and Jaleel Adai, gain of five. I haven't mentioned uh, Adai's name much, but he's also one of the top defenders for this Chippewa football team. But his game is really more in the past. Uh, he plays the slot and the alley on defense against the quick screen game as well as anybody I've seen in the entire country. Hasn't had to do that tonight, um, but when that time comes, there ain't many better than Jaleel Adai at stopping the quick screen game. Western Kentucky overall two of seven on third down tonight. The motion to tight end Mitchell Henry and the pass to the 41 is caught by the other tight end Jack Doyle for a first down. And that time they put Jaleel Adai between a rock and a hard place as they they run one tight end outside and he kind of leaned toward that guy and then they throw it back to the inside. So he was kind of caught between the two, ends up making the tackle, but wasn't able to break the pass up. Good scheme there for Western Kentucky. You come in at uh, offset eye type formation, Ray. You went right back and a crease that time for Andrews up near midfield. Andrews chasing the. Barry Sanders single season yards record all purpose yards. They just, in, sorry go ahead Mark. Came in needing 274. Still a sizable chunk. He's got away from that a lot of ways uh, kickoff returns punt returns receptions as well as his prolific running of the football. Now here he goes up motions up top. And they give it to the fullback, Kadeem Jones. The carry for the junior out of Dundee, Florida. Andrews 120 yards shy of setting the single season record. Now, we must quantify this. Barry yes. Sanders did play fewer games. And back at that time, the bowl games did not count on the stats. Right. So in essence, uh, Barry did it in 11 games, and this is the 13th for Antonio Andrews. Not to take anything away from what he's doing, but kind of puts, shows you where Barry Sanders was. Going deep. Willie McNeil incomplete. Well, I was just mentioning a short time ago, McNeil second on the team and catches with 40. Does not have a catch tonight. And that time singled up with Taylor Bradley. I like that they took the shot though. This might loosen up the Central Michigan defense. Really nice deep ball from Kwan Jakes. I mean it's perfect right there. And the, the problem was to me is McNeil didn't get his hands on it. The ball hit him in the shoulder first and that gave Taylor Bradley the chance to knock it away. I mean if McNeil gets his hands up. I think he makes that catch but instead the ball got into him hit him on the shoulder. Nice throw by Jakes. Yeah. 
Keeping it on the ground this time for Andrews. To the 40, leaving him about four yards shy of the first down after he gained a six. Stopped by Jaleel Adai. And they're running that power play off to the right side. And that means they pull big Lewis Polanco, number 63, the left guard. And then they also lead a, a, a tight end. So you got two big guys slamming up into the hole. And Antonio Andrews has been taking advantage of those blocks here in this drive. Andrews with that rush now right at 100 yards. 19 carries for Sino. Jake's across the middle. First, nope, dropped. Incomplete for the tight end Doyle. Had he hung on, would have been enough for the first down. Right now they're signaling catch, but I don't I think don't he hung on to that. that. And uh, Dan Enos doesn't understand it either. He's coming after somebody, and he wants an explanation because the ball was on the ground, and then they. <laughs> They hurry up and snap it. And Western doing, as you just said, Ray, trying the to hurry up and snap The previous play is under review. The ruling on the field is catch and down. So this will go to the replay official, John Armstrong. We'll have the verdict when we come back. Uh, just a moment ago, our replay official, John Armstrong, says this was a completed pass but let's take a look at it here Ray well you see he's got the ball he's down and then late is when the ball pops out the question is was he going to the ground to make the catch and I think the ruling was no he wasn't and so he, he was up made the catch then goes down ball comes out late after the play's done and complete and therefore the play stands personally I don't agree with it but we all have a job to do and that's not mine. <laughs> and it does give Western Kentucky a first down. But now they have to figure out the clock. Even though they would have stopped the clock to move the chains on the first down and then they tried to run a quick play. And then that advanced the clock as well. Well, the Discover Orange Bowl is on ESPN New Year's Night as Jordan Lynch and Mac Champion, number 15, Northern Illinois, look to make a statement with their high-powered offense and they'll face the ACC champion, number 12, Florida State Seminoles. The ball will be placed at the 34, first and 10. Seminoles have one of the top-rated and stingiest defenses in the nation. The Discover Orange Bowl New Year's Night at 8.30 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. You like Northern Illinois? I think they're going to give Florida State uh, more of a problem than most people do. Jordan Lynch, the quarterback for Northern Illinois, is an outstanding football player, and he's a handful for any defense. Quick strike to the back, Andrews. He sidesteps up to the 29, brought down by Shamari Benton. It's been a real nice year for the Mid American Conference, as you see a list of their wins against BCS AQ. Automatic qualifier opponents. And right down that list, there's some ranked teams in there and, and a big year for the MAC. In fact, the MAC uh, sent a record number of, of teams to bowl games this year, including the Central Michigan outfit. Central Michigan beating Iowa back on September 22nd, 32 31 in Iowa City. 12 play of this drive. How much there for Andrews? Met by Joe Kenville. I haven't heard much from Joe Kenville today. And one of the co captains on this Chippewa football team. And a leader on that defensive line. As a younger brother, Mike, who also plays for Central Michigan, has tied in on offense. Very intense football player is Joe Kenville. Western Kentucky four of nine on third down under four minutes to play in this third quarter to three point game. A bunch of tight ends in there. Henry the tight end in motion. And Antonio Andrews like he has enough for the first down. Andrews keeps pounding it away on that right side of his offensive line behind Adam Smith and Seth White. 
And you got those tight ends that come in there to fullback. Kadeem Jones doing a nice job lead blocking tonight. Eight touches on this drive for Andrews is still 100 yards away from Barry Sanders all purpose. Single season mark. They're going to ride that horse no doubt about it. Jakes to the fullback Kadeem Jones who's down inside the five at the one. They love the wheel route down in this area of the field getting close to the red zone. They run it with the fullback. And you see the little pump fake there. It draws the defenders up. And Kadeem Jones finds himself free along the sidelines. A nice throw from Jakes to get him there. Goal to goal now. Jones had a breakout year last year as a sophomore with eight touchdowns. He has five overall touchdowns this year. Confusion on the personnel group. He's right back in there. And he might run out of time on this. They might have to take a timeout if they don't hurry. Play clock at six. Watch up the formation. And there was some movement. They got the playoff at time, but the movement, the pre snap whistle. Yeah, and the indecision on the sideline. Ball start. Offense, number 75. Five yard penalty. First down. Seth White, the right tackle. But as I was saying, the. the uh, indecision on what to do what personnel group to put in the game is what created the urgency and then I think the offsides there for the false start by white and I'm amazed they haven't had more issues with that because Walt Wells is the offensive coordinator the run game coordinator so when they decide to run a running play Wells will call it and you're looking at Nick Sheridan he's up in the booth he's the pass game coordinator you might remember him Michigan fans as a quarterback in the Rich Rodriguez era he calls the pass plays. So there's a lot of communication going on. Andrews still going, lunging, did not reach the goal line. You know, to, to finish that up, um, when Willie Taggart was there, he's the one who called the play. So they had to figure out how they're going to do this with Coach Taggart not around. And I understand that the biggest problem would be. All right, one guy's going to call run, the other guy's going to call pass, but who's going to decide whether Which it it's is. run or pass, yeah. right? Well, they're going to work in the bowl game with a chance to take their first lead if they can punch it in. Over the top, lost the football, but the line judge says he got in. I think he did. He ended up in Jaleel dies basket I mean it just came right to him but I think that Andrews broke the plane before he lost control of the football actually it's not Andrews excuse me that's Kadeem Jones the fullback and here he goes let's see if he breaks the plane right there Ooh, that's close because it looked like he was juggling it you're gonna have to take a look at that one and Western Kentucky trying to quickly get the point after done but uh, the previous play is under review. The ruling on the field was that the runner broke the plane of the goal line before losing possession of the ball. I'll tell you what, this is going to be a huge, huge call oh, in this football game yeah. right here. I mean, Western Kentucky could go from taking the lead to squandering an unbelievable opportunity. And Central Michigan having the ball at the 20. All you got to do is get the tip of the ball right past that line and it looks to me like it's there yeah I, I agree that he got it over but but he was juggling it, it maybe a little bit before that if we could take it back a little farther uh, you know, he was it looked to me like he had a After little review, bit of a juggle the ruling on the field stands touchdown well, it wasn't confirmed but it stands so yeah. there wasn't enough video evidence to overturn it well, that was close. Yeah, you need indisputable video evidence, and uh, they felt they didn't have enough to overturn it. I, I myself, I thought it was a touchdown. I think he just broke the plane with the tip of the football before he started losing uh, the possession. Point after for Garrett Sweatman. You know, Western Kentucky has the lead for the first time tonight after a 16-play drive capped off. By the Jones touchdown run. Oh, that's a close one. <laughs> Here he goes <laughs> over the top. Is he losing the ball? Man. <laughs> a matter of inches. 
I'm glad I didn't have to make that decisive call. Third rushing touchdown of the year for Jones's sixth overall TD, and apparently he got it over by a hair with possession. Well, Western Kentucky trying to win a bowl game for the first time as a member of the football bowl subdivision. Well, Bobby Petrino is their head coach. Of course, was the coach at the University of Louisville, 03 to 06. Won 41 of 50 games there. Went to the Falcons in 07. Resigned December 11th. Arkansas 08 to 2011 and then fired there. And hired at Western Kentucky December 10th. Jobs have not ended well for Bobby Petrino. I mean, he, when he left Louisville, there was uh, people with issues of that. And then he left the Falcons you know, 13 games into a 16 game season. And the night after, he told his guys, Hey, I'm going to be here. I'm your coach. And, you know, <laughs> at some point, he's got to clean that up. And hopefully, the, the, what he went through was enough to make him change. Sailor the Valley. That's what Western Kentucky is counting on, and they did their interviews, they did their due diligence, and they're confident with what they're getting. So to me, that's a good sign. That's a good step in the right direction. However, I'm I'm one of those guys that's going to wait and see what happens with Bobby Petrino at Western Kentucky, and how long is he going to be there, and, and how is that thing going to end for him? He's already hired Kevin Peoples. It's helped him out on the recruiting trail, and he told me earlier today on the phone that. By early next week, he should begin announcing his staff hirings. And it doesn't appear that he'll uh, retain any of the current Western Kentucky coaches, at least not to my knowledge at this point. Radcliffe turned the wrong way, or one of them not match up with Tipton there. And yeah, somebody didn't get the right signal. Not sure who you put that one on, but I know that it was Radcliffe who ended up with the ball running around saying, What's going on? He was fortunate to get back, maybe gain a, a yard on the play. So we'll see how Central Michigan responds here now, down in this football game for the first time, and clock running inside a minute to go third quarter. Get Western Kentucky credit because Central Michigan's dominated statistically, but all of a sudden the Hilltoppers are on top. Lots of time for Radcliffe. And the catch at the 34, and then forward progress. And take him up to the 34. Bring up a third down and five here for the Chippewas. Then McCord the tight end. And that may take us to the end of the quarter here. I don't think they're going to break the huddle in time, and that's going to take us to the fourth quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. So the only points of the third quarter, the touchdown, the disputed touchdown, the touchdown done the left for Jones. Fourth quarter, coming up from Detroit. ESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Happy holidays from inside Ford Field in Detroit where it's nice and cozy. It's been a mess, snowy outside, and we've got a good football game going here for the 2012 Little Caesars Bowl, 21-17, Western Kentucky as we begin the fourth quarter. Central Michigan, a third and five from their own 35 yard line. Radcliffe's pass complete, breaking a tackle. Wilson, a first down. Pick up a 13. That's a really nice throw by Ryan Radcliffe. Had enough heat on it to get it through the tight window that he's going for. You see just a little outside back to the inside move by Cody Wilson coverage was there. The window was tight Radcliffe got it in and Wilson made a move to move the chains. Big big third down pickup. Tipton finds a crease. 
All the way to the 37 yard line of Western Kentucky before Jonathan Dowling stopped him, but a pickup of 15 yards. And Central Michigan ran right into the blitz, which a lot of times is not a good thing, but they're able to get it right here. Watch this. This blitz is coming right at the point of attack. That's Darius Washington. But he gets washed a little bit, and then that's all that Zerlon Tipton needs is a little bit of move, a little bit of room, and then he finishes it pretty nice by running over Jonathan Dowling. First down, Central Michigan. Tipton again inside the 30. Good backs start to do their serious work in the fourth quarter. And Zerlon Tipton is a good back. Let's, let's look at his previous play when he ran over Dowling. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> Over that boom. He got a little excited, excited about himself down there. Another unbalanced line for Central Michigan. Right back to Tipton. Flag comes out. It's had, had enough for the first time, but we'll see about the flag. I don't know if it was Darren Keaton locked up with Andrew Jackson. But that Illegal is. formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, they went with the unbalanced line, but they didn't end up with enough guys on the line of scrimmage. We need seven guys on the line of scrimmage. Somebody didn't didn't get where they're supposed to get. Wilson, the receiver, at the top of your screen, wide left. The Valley is now in the back, and they give to Sailor the Valley. The Thirty-two. The Valley has an interesting skill set. The true freshman, he's 5'9", 213 pounds, and they use him as a third down back. So that makes you think that he's, he's good in space and he's got some quickness and some speed and all that and he does but they also use him as a four minute back to pound it out at the end of games and then they spell Zerlon Tipton with Lavalli as well. So this kid can do just about anything they ask him to. Valley out of Mason High School Mason Michigan really come on at the end of the season. Third down at four. Give it to Lavalli. Turns the corner, has the first down and more. Inside the 10, bumped down around the five. You were just saying about Sailor LaValle. Well, he's got all the skills you want out of a running back. And here he breaks a couple of arm tackles. Because by all rights, they had him in the backfield. He's just going to take it and head around this end. And, and he's going to break a couple of tackles right there. Boom. Number one, he gets by. He gets by a second guy. Then he's wide open. And then he shows you the speed and then the ability to finish a run down to the five-yard line. Actually, I think maybe a little bit inside the five almost. But a, a heck of a run by Lavalle breaking a couple of tackles. 26-yard run for Lavalle. His longest run of the year. His previous long had been 22 yards. First and goal back to Tipton. Wrapped up by Andrew Jackson. Jackson's going to tell him about it also. And that's a lot of linebacker, Andrew Jackson. 6'1", 265 pounder. And his game is straight ahead, no fair dodging. And that's exactly what he got on that one. He's not a guy that'll go sideline to sideline necessarily, but anything between the tackles, he's going to come up and make an immediate hit. And you can tell that by the, the number 17 and a half tackles for loss on the year. That's because he comes downhill in a hurry. Tipton trying to cut it outside. That was Jackson who had a chance at him at the ankles, but he scored it away. But then Xavier Boyd was able to finish him off. Western Kentucky is geared up to stop the run, which they are right here. It's a difficult proposition because they fly around to the football and they finish hard. And that was Xavier's Boyd with the big hit at the end of this. I think Central Michigan would be much better served to spread it out. And then if you want to run the football, fine. But to just pack it in against that defense, I have a hard time moving them out of there. Big play here, a third and goal for the Chippewas. 
Radcliffe reaching for the end zone. He did not get in. A little short is Wilson. And time to make a decision on fourth and goal from inside the one. And Dan Enos, I believe, is going to go for it. I think that's what he came here for to win. And if, if you can't get a yard, then, you know, what are you doing? And they are. I think they're going to. If I'm them, I'm going to spread it out again. Give yourself an opportunity that way. I, I do not recommend bunching everybody up and trying to knock them off the ball. They have not been successful with this. Look for maybe a little play action here. Chippewas 4-12 on fourth down this year. Give it to Tipton. Tumbling. Did he get in? Yes. I give that left side of the offensive line for the Chippewas a lot of credit. They ran right behind their big guy, six foot eight, 305 pound senior Eric Fisher. And I guess if you if you need a yard, that's where you go. He's behind the big guy, and that's where they went. Twentieth rushing touchdown for Tipton, his twenty-first overall TD. Now they're going to take a look at this just to make sure. Yeah, sounds like it. Looks like Lance Guidry wants them to take a look at it. Timeout, Western Kentucky. Their first charge timeout. So Western Kentucky uses their first timeout with 9:21 to play. Kentucky. Well, in real time, we thought this was a touchdown, but looking at it again in slow motion, this touchdown may be coming off the board. It should, because right there, it's behind these feet, but his elbow is clearly on the ground before the ball crosses the plane. And so I don't think Zerlon Tipton got in the end zone. And again, this is a fourth down play. Who's our referee? After review, it was determined that the runner was down at the half yard line. Therefore, Western Kentucky will have the ball first and 10. Western Kentucky is not charged with a timeout. So Western Kentucky used the timeout, got the play looked at, the call has been reversed. Take the touchdown off the board. And it's a 21-17 game still in favor of Western Kentucky. Great job by Lance Guidry of recognizing that, seeing it, calling the timeout, and making him go look at it. That's, that's excellent head coaching right there. Now the only downside is they have the football just a couple of feet, if that, over their own goal line. Yeah, it's time for quarterback sneak here. That's dangerous. Did he get out? I don't think so. Is that a safety? No signal. Oh, it's close. Might have got over the end line. You got to get the whole ball past the end line in order for that thing to be out of the end zone and not a safety. And I don't know how Andrews did it at the end. That's why I said quarterback sneak. That's a dangerous deal to have your running back. And you see the ball. He did extend it over. But that's why you quarterback sneak from right here because penetration is going to blow you up and maybe get make you have a safety. I would sneak again here. Well, not again, but I would sneak. Gives him a little breathing room there. Yeah, up to about the two or three. Now it puts him in a third down and nine situation. And like to pass from your own end zone, but you don't really have much choice in this situation. The last thing you want to do is have your punter have to punt from where they're at. Normally, a punter stands 14 yards behind the ball. They've only got 11 to the back of the end zone. Ball's inside their own two, third and nine. They pitch and tripped up at the three or four is Antonio Andrews fourth down. Ran a little crack sweep. They brought Mitchell Henry in motion and Jaleel Adai and Justin Chiroki make the, the play 
I thought Mitchell Henry was coming towards the line of scrimmage on his motion, which is illegal. They didn't call that one on him. Get it out to the three yard line. That still puts Brakefield in a, a difficult position to punt this football out of there. And he's right at the back line of the end zone. Wilson standing at the 45. Low snap. It's they got a piece of that. It's rolling around the 15. Kick back around the 20. Right, that's a live football because Central Michigan touched it. If Western Kentucky gets on it, it's their ball. May have been Jolin Briggs. Fortunately for the Chippewas, and Jaleel Adai ends up with the ball. Take a look at this right here. A low snap. He stops it with his feet. And then it's Briggs. Jolin Briggs who gets the hand on it. And now this is a live football once the Chippewas touch it. And Jaleel Hadai saves Michi Central Michigan's bacon by falling on that football. So Western Kentucky did have a chance to recover this. But it is recovered by Central Michigan. We got a crazy one going in Detroit. <laughs> Football, the Little Caesars Bowl is brought to you by Little Caesars, home of the large, hot and ready pepperoni pizza, the all new Ford Fusion. Go further and ProjectLuna.com. Back here inside Ford Field, this 2012 Little Caesars Bowl. <laughs> I tell you what, Ray. That was crazy, man. It's been nuts. <laughs> and now here's Central Michigan taking over at the 26 of Western Kentucky. With under seven minutes to go. I just want to clarify one thing. After that punt across the line of scrimmage, then if Western Kentucky gets on it, it's a dead ball right there, Central's ball. But Central touched it first, and that's what made it a free ball where either team could have possessed it. Brad Cliff looking to throw on first down, too high towards the sideline. There was some contact, and the flag is out. Yes, he crawled the intended receiver. And Thomas is going to get get it for pass interference or holding one of the two. Pass interference on the defense number 19. Ball will be placed at spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And Radcliffe threw that thing away, so they're fortunate in that regard because it ultimately it really wasn't a catchable football. He saw the tight coverage, threw it high, but maybe those earlier high passes <laughs> that he's thrown, he got away with it that time because of that. It's not out of the realm of possibilities that he would let one sail like that. First down CMU at the 22 of Western Kentucky. Tipped and tripped up. Capital One Bowl Week is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. And watch ESPN.com and with the Watch ESPN app. Triple header tomorrow, triple header following day. We got a lot of bowl games to come. Just getting hot and heavy with it. Second down and 12. Well, the Chippewas have not. Targeted Andrew Flory in a long time. A lot of time, Radcliffe going for Wilson at a flag at the five. Keontae Young on the coverage. Good job by Cody Wilson, and they just can't cover him. He's too slippery, and they've been had to grab him. Young in that trail position behind Cody Wilson reached out and grabbed him. Pass interference. Defense number 29. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Take a look at it. It's kind of a little bit below. Right there's the contact. And, you know, Cody Wilson kind of reminds you of a Wes Welker type slot receiver who just has that uh, ability to just squirm away from guys and. and and put it actually create a sense of panic where they feel like they got to grab the little guy to just maintain control on it. 
Taylor of the Valley wrapped up. By Barry Boyd. And Barry Boyd did a nice job of avoiding the fullback Adam Fenton and then getting back on track to make the tackle. Red Zone's been an issue tonight for Central Michigan. Yeah. A couple of possessions. This will be their third one. Just three points they've been able to pull out of that. Had the field goal earlier and then the fumble on their last possession on a fourth down. This is a second and goal from the 11. Make like the throw the backs out of this set. Going to the end zone. Touchdown, Wilson. And Central Michigan reclaims the lead with 5 11 to go. And Cody Wilson, the senior, picking up the slack for Titus Davis and Courtney Williams, both suspended for this game. And Cody Wilson said, I'll take care of that for you here at the end of the ball game. Just a nice little corner route. Beats his man. The other, uh, he beat the safety. The corner kind of sloughed off to try and get there late, but the throw had enough mustard on it. Excellent pass from Ryan Radcliffe, and the Chippewas respond. An extra point for David Harmon out of the hold of Wilson. 24 21 Chippewas with 5 11 to go. And Radcliffe just throws the corner out to perfection, splitting two defenders. Cody Wilson, a stick, a break, a cut, and a catch, and a touchdown. And the Chippewas retake the lead by three with 5.11 to go. Cody Wilson's touchdown catch has given Central Michigan a three-point lead. 5.11 to go. In this 2012 Little Caesars Bowl, Ray, the last couple of possessions had some crazy plays. Yeah. And we have Radcliffe, who's nearing 10,000 career passing yards. He's 83 yards shy of that. 253 total, three touchdown passes now after the one to Wilson. He's made some decent throws tonight. I don't know if he made any better than that one. I mean, he really split it through a really tight window between two defenders in a critical point in the ball game. That was good stuff from Ryan Radcliffe. Andrews will not bring it out. I was talking about some of those wild plays that have come in the last couple of possessions, Rick. Yeah, it was fourth quarter. First, you had the touchdown that Kadeem Jones looked like he fumbled it in the end zone, but he was awarded the touchdown. And then they called this a touchdown, but they reviewed it, and the elbow was down. And then the block punt led to Central Michigan getting the football back, which led to this touchdown pass. A perfect strike from Ryan Radcliffe to Cody Wilson to give the Chippewas a three-point lead with 5-11 to go here in the Little Caesars Bowl. Well, let's see how Western Kentucky responds. Give to Andrews. Jaleel Adai just came up from his secondary position, playing run the whole way, and met Andrews right at the line of scrimmage. And he's a good blitzer, is Jaleel Adai. I mean, he took off from way outside the corner area and still ends up on the pile. No game. I gave him a yard, second down at nine. Jakes across the middle to his tight end door, but he's upended at the 29. And Jaleel Adai really stepping up defensively in this second half for Central Michigan. He is, and they're moving him around. They're, they're using him in different ways. Now here he's going to sit back on his backside, tight end cross. Here comes Adai with the open field tackle. Just right across the thighs of Jack Doyle, upending him. With no chance to gain any extra yards. Western 5 of 11 on third down tonight. The big third and six. Jake's find this guy, McNeil, with a lot of room. Across midfield, he lost the football. Recovered 
by Vasquez. That's a huge play by Marcus Vasquez because that ball was out and loose. And was that McNeil's first catch of the day? I believe it is, yes. He comes in on a slant route, gets it right in front of the linebacker, and here, watch this hit, bam, right there, shakes the ball loose. Big hit there from uh, Anthony Young to knock this thing loose. Watch Young just get right on the football, bam, right there, splats it up in the air. Great reaction from Marcus Vasquez to come up with it. First down at the 49. Central Michigan to give it to the fullback Nick Bosch. Man, we've had some strange plays yeah, in this, this fourth quarter. This fourth quarter has been one for the ages. Both these teams fighting hard to get this bowl victory. It'd be the first in the history of Western Kentucky at the FBS level. Central Michigan, two and five all time in bowl games. Under three minutes to go, each team has all three of their timeouts remaining. Doyle in motion. Play fake. Almost caught. There's two receivers in the vicinity there on that sideline. And Adai was in that area as well. Yeah, Kaylon Jakes is just late throwing this football. Adai ends up tipping it, and so it hits Vasquez in the chest instead of the hands. But had Kaylon Jakes thrown the ball on time, he had Vasquez, no doubt about it. It just took him too long. And who else but Jaleel Adai in there to get a hand on things? Third and eight, line to make is the 39. Jakes has a first down, another catch for McNeil, his second on this drive, and he hangs on to it and is tackled at the 26, first down. And the Chippewas played coverage. They rushed three and dropped eight, and because of the time that Jakes had, he's able to find a little window to get the ball through. You see, that wasn't his first option. He was looking to the other side of the field first and then came back to Willie McNeil and caught him in the seam behind the linebacker in front of the safety. Clock running. We've slipped under two minutes to go. Three-point game. One balance line shift. Jakes going for the tight end. Doyle incomplete at the goal line. Doyle, that, that was a tackle eligible. They shifted the whole line over to the left to try and confuse Central Michigan in their coverage. But the Chippewas were right on it, and they were they had Lorenzo White all over Doyle. And it was very close to being a grab. Nice play at the end by Doyle. Excuse me, uh, by White. That is just out thrown, overthrown. Doyle wanted a penalty, and that was as close as it gets, but great recovery by Lorenzo White. Incompletion stopped the clock. 144 to go. Pitch. Andrews stays on his feet. Run out about the 22 23 yard line by Shamari Benton and Lorenzo White. This is a crack sweep, and you're going to get one of the best crackback blocks. That borders on illegal almost, as it was number 93, Joe Kenville, who got cracked big time. And he'll remember that one for a while. Third and five. As we've seen that they're in field goal range. And what we've seen from David Harmon tonight. That's a false start on the center. And that's still Luke Stansfield in there. Sean Conway was hurt earlier. Snap infraction on the offense, number 69. Five-yard penalty, third down. And Stansfeld didn't, didn't know if he uh, lost control of the football. He started the snap kind of almost in slow motion and then lost control of it. So that's 
That's one that's going to be tough to overcome. Puts them in a very tenuous situation here. However, they are in field goal range to tie this thing up. Back to a third and ten. Jake's pass complete, shy of the first down. The 19 by McNeil. And Lance Guidry's got to kick this football. You got to give your team a chance to win. It's, it's fourth and two. Minute 20 left. I let the clock run all the way down and then kick my field goal. You try to take it to overtime? Yes. And you know what I actually do? I try to maybe draw Central Michigan off sides, but it doesn't look like they're going to do it. And I can't believe Central Michigan isn't using their own timeout to save themselves time to come back the other way. That just makes no sense. Well, Jake's. Let's see if they're going to try to draw them off. Well, he's he's going to call a timeout because they're they're out of time. Yeah. I, I don't understand why Dan Enos did not take a timeout to stop that clock and save time. We'll step aside. 51 seconds left in a regulation. Three point game, 51 seconds left. Let's take a look at tonight's perfect play. Brought to you by Arisa. This is the first play run from scrimmage tonight. Gray by Western Kentucky. Yeah, a little razzle dazzle to start the game off. A pair of laterals back to Jakes. He throws it down the field. Rico Brown catches it. Looked like he was going to score, but Lorenzo White hustled to bring him down. Arisa's perfect play of the game. Well, here it is. Fourth down. I can't believe they're going for this. They're passing up a chance for a game time field goal. On fourth and two. And here's Doyle right up here at the tight end. That's their number one receiver. Going towards the tight end incomplete. He went for Doyle at the five. And Western Kentucky turns it over on downs with 49 seconds left. I appreciate Lance Guidry and what he's thinking there and, and going for it trying to I mean it's a team that gambled earlier in the year and went for two in the first overtime to knock off Kentucky uh, they're a gambler gambling group but that one I don't agree with it was close and they went to their best player Jack Doyle Central Michigan was there with the coverage forced Jake's to throw it too high Anthony Young with the coverage on Jack Doyle and now it's for all intents and purposes over. In Central Michigan. With only two timeouts for Western Kentucky Central can just take a knee. I don't understand why they're handing it off and running. And it's it's it. And he tackled it to 24. Timeout. Western Kentucky, their second of the half, 30 second timeout. And one timeout remaining for Western Kentucky. Coming up next, it's Sports Center with John Butchie Gross, Adnan Vert. LeBron leads the Heat, the six straight win. Cowboys have a plan to get physical with RG3 and Kirk Herbstreet on how the Irish can upset, out, upset Alabama. All hit on Sports Center. Well, you got to give Western Kentucky credit coming down here and coming up here, I should say, and laying it all on the line. But weren't able to get it done on that critical fourth down at the end. And now Central has done the math and realizes that all they have to do is take a knee. No sense in risking a handoff like they did on that first down. I understand that one. Radcliffe takes a knee. And Western Kentucky interim head coach Lance Guidry's team gambled and came up short. And timeout. The, uh, Western their Kentucky. Last timeout. Their final timeout of the half. 30 seconds. Let's take a look at tonight's player of the game brought to you by Capital One. It's the Central Michigan quarterback, the senior Ryan Radcliffe. 
253 yards, three TDs, no picks tonight, Ray. And to me, that's the that's the ball game. That's the key to it right there. Ryan Radcliffe taking care of the football. When he is taking care of the football, the Chippewas have done really well. I mean, you can go over the last six games for the Chippewas when they won four of them, and even you count this one, you give this this W to him. They're five and two, and he had only three interceptions over those seven games. Makes all the difference in the world when your quarterback takes care of the football. I tell you, uh, Jaleel Adak was all over the field too. But you know, offensive players always win the awards. <laughs> Spoken like a true linebacker, Ray Bentley. A reminder if you'd like to see exclusive coverage of the Little Caesars Bowl trophy ceremony, we'll have that for you on ESPN3 as soon as we wrap it up here. And then Enos gets the shower. His team wins it by three over Western Kentucky. Nothing better than the Gatorade bath at the end of a big win. Western Kentucky fails in an attempt to win their first bowl game as an FBS member. Finished the year at seven and six. Central Michigan finishes at seven and six. Mail down on the field. Coach on that fourth and two, Western Kentucky elected not to go to the field goal and to just go for it. How did you defend the, the play, and were you surprised they didn't just kick it for the tie? No, when we call, when we saw them call their team over, we knew they were going to ask their team, and I knew what their team would want to do. They're going to try to win the game, and so we just played base defense, and everybody played their responsibilities, and. Uh, um, we had guys in the right spot. It was good discipline defense. A clean game by your quarterback, Ryan Radcliffe. What do you think about his performance tonight? He's, he's been awesome for three years. He's, uh, he's been uh, criticized a lot, but that's not because of him. It's because our team has struggled, and uh, he had his, he's had a great year, and I was glad to see him have a great game day in his last game. He's a great kid. Now, your season had a lot of ups and downs. What does this mean when going forward? Well, we won four in a row, five out of our last six. And uh, just, I'm proud of this group for persevering, and uh, I think we're on our way up. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank you. And four wins in a row to end the season for Central Michigan. Once again, our final score, Central Michigan 24 and Western Kentucky 21. If you'd like live coverage of the trophy ceremony down on the field, log on to ESPN3. Coming up next on ESPN at Sports Center, big story tonight, the Heat win their sixth in a row and more. That's going to take care of things from Ford Field in Detroit. Thanks for sharing with us the 2012 Little Caesars Bowl where Central Michigan wins it by three.